Hey guys, happy Resurrection Day. Um, and, oh, I have 3% battery, okay. <laughs> we do this a little shorter. But, uh, and you know, before I talk about the resurrection, something I found very ironic about today, uh, it's from a personal, you know, my, my personal life. You know, my, my, my parents are both unsaved. Uh, and they're both out of, out of Brazil, uh, overseas. And, you know, so the, they're having some people over where, they're, where they are. And they're going to prepare a lamb and have lamb. And I find that very ironic. Uh, you know, well, I guess at least now I might have that uh, in common with the a saved Jew that has some people in his family or her family. Uh, you know, still denying that Jesus is the Messiah and. You know, they have their lab at, at Passover, and that must feel ironic to a saved Jew as well. For, for their unsaved family, it was eating lamb. Uh, but anyways. Uh, today I'm wearing black, but someday Jesus is going to clothe me in white. Okay. <laughs> but I do want to briefly talk about the resurrection. Uh, I was going to make it longer, but the battery's short on, on my device here. Um, we're going to do some verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, I'll start at verse 12. I'll read it until I think verse 17. Uh, I have a Bible in my, lap, in my lap here. Okay, starting at uh, verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead... How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are also found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He hath raised up, that He raised up Christ, and He raised not up. So. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 17, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Uh, ye are yet in your sins. But then it goes to continue on to, you know, talk about the resurrection, right? And, you know, and, and even before, in the same chapter, Paul mentions the resurrection, right? The resurrection isn't, you know, don't take what I just read to you out of context. You know, the context of the whole chapter is also proving the resurrection, right? And reminding believers of the resurrection. Uh, so, no, Paul isn't saying that, you know, your, your faith is vain and, and, you know, and that you're yet in your sins because... Uh, Jesus didn't rise from the dead. No, what he's saying is that if he didn't rise from the dead, uh, then your faith would be vain, and you, yeah, you would be in, in your sins. But the good news is that Jesus Christ not only died for your sins according to the Scriptures, uh, but that he also rose from the dead. Okay? He was resurrected. Um. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is, is crucial to the Christian faith. Um, because, I mean, even when you think of somebody like Peter, right? Uh, after Jesus rose from the dead, he, Jesus went looking for Peter. Because Peter was just, you know, depressed, back fishing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know... 
in those three days where Jesus was in the tomb, you know, the disciples were depressed that they didn't know what to do. And it looks like some of them even contemplated going back to their old life. Okay. Uh, but uh, thank God Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he appeared and he was seen by over 500 brethren and Paul mentions that uh, and also in 1 Corinthians 15, a little earlier from the verses that I read to you. And he also declares the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He tells how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And um, you know, t today we, we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ and You know, the, the resurrection also proves that he's God, okay? Because he wasn't the only person that was crucified, even even on that day, uh, right? Obviously, in history, other people were crucified. Uh, but also, just on that particular day, he was crucified next to two thieves. Um, but to only Jesus Christ, the only one... Uh, you know, it was crucified and resurrected. And look, he was God manifest in the flesh. You know, he still is God. Obviously, he doesn't stop being God. Uh, what I, what I, what I meant to say is that you know, God met. You know, he was manifest in the flesh. People saw God in the flesh. Okay, he communed with people, he talked to people, he, he healed people, he performed many miracles, and he spoke a lot of truth, uh, and a lot of people didn't like the truth that he spoke, okay, and uh, some believed and others didn't, the ones that didn't believe ended up conspiring to get him crucified, they wanted to have him killed, uh, but let us remember that Jesus Christ went willingly to that cross because if he didn't go willingly to that cross, there was no way for anybody to be saved. And one one of the most ironic things in the Bible, uh, I believe it was in the book of Matthew, where there's this mob of, of uh, angry Jews that, that want to, that are basically begging uh, is a Pontius Pilate, right, to, to crucify Jesus, and they're screaming, crucify him, crucify him, and and they also said his blood be on us and on our children and it was it's very ironic because we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins and those Jews at the time had no idea um when they said, you know, his blood be upon us and on our children, they said it of hatred. Uh, but what they meant for evil, God meant for good. And, you know, Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on the cross so that everybody would have an opportunity to be saved. And, uh, you know, he lived the perfect sinless life, a life you and I can never live. And he had his sins imputed onto, or excuse me, he had our sins imputed onto his body. Right? He, uh, who knew no sin, was made sin for us. Why? So that we could have his righteousness imputed onto our account. So he had our sins imputed onto his body on that cross. And he took the punishment of the sins of the whole world. And look, salvation's a free gift. Okay. And that's the good news. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what wicked things you've done in your life. As long as you trust Jesus Christ, you're saved and you're forgiven of those sins. So, if you think you're too far gone... 
know that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. And that when we were yet without strength, Jesus Christ, he really did die for the ungodly. Okay. And that's good news for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him never perish, but have uh, everlasting life. Salvation is a free gift from God. And once you have it, you're always going to have it. He's not going to revoke it. He's not going to take it away from you. It's once saved, always saved. Eternal life really is something that is everlasting. And Jesus Christ is the true God and eternal life. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And uh, if you're already saved, thank God. And uh, just remember that uh, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, he was also thinking of you. God bless.